everybody. My name is David Brown, as most of you know, <clears throat> and I live in Mill Valley. Uh, to make it a bit easier to follow what I'm about to say, I've provided each of you with a handout that corresponds to much but not all of my statement. Some months ago, I submitted a letter asking this board to investigate whether certain pension enhancements cited by the grand jury were unlawfully granted. Ms. Dunning sent me a letter <clears throat> excuse me, dated October 5th laying out why the board could not undertake such an investigation. Recently, I reread Ms. Dunning's letter and found something I had missed, something quite disturbing, actually. Ms. Dunning concluded the board could not undertake the investigation I requested due to Article 3, Section 3.5 of the California Constitution. And to my embarrassment, I actually never took the time to look up Article 3, Section 3.5 until very recently. So if you look at number one on your handout, you'll see what Ms. Dunning wrote to me. And I'm not going to read it. I'll let you guys read it in the interest of saving time and making this more pleasant. When you're all done, let me know. Roy, do you have a handout? Yes. This statement and its reliance on Article 3, Section 3.5 is the legal underpinning of Ms. Dunning's argument that there is no basis for you to perform the investigation I proposed. Item 2 on your handout is Article 3, Section 3.5 of the Constitution. Please read it, take your time, and focus on the highlighted parts. As you can see, Article 3, Section 3.5 <clears throat> has nothing to do with the possible lawful enactment of a statute or of an ordinance granting a retirement benefit or with your authority to investigate either one. Article 3, Section 3.5 only limits your power with respect to a statute you might deem unconstitutional or where you deem a potential conflict between a, sta a state statute and federal law. Neither applies to my request that the board investigate certain pension enhancements. Nothing in Article 3, Section 3.5 precludes you from investigating anything, much less whether the plan is making payments that were not lawfully granted. On July 19, I raised my, this concern in an email to Mr. Whitman. The response I, rece I received, presumably provided by Ms. Dunning, but I don't know for sure, is item 3 on your handout. It says, Ms. Dunning was stating a general legal principle that could be a possible outcome. A plain reading of Ms. Dunning's letter makes this statement hard to credit. Ms. Dunning's comment about Article 3, Section 3.5 was made in the concluding paragraph of her letter. It was made without condition or limitation. It was not stated as a general legal principle. It was the foundation of her view that you should not proceed with an investigation. Items 4 through 7 on your handout are comments I received from other attorneys regarding Ms. Dunning's letter and Article 3, Section 3.5. I'm going to read these, actually, if you, unless you guys don't want me to, but I'm um, one attorney who read Ms. Dunning's letter opined, none of the cited provisions include an investigation. The board can investigate and then file for a declaratory judgment action to get court guidance. Another attorney went on to say, a plain reading of the section indicates that it is intended to clarify separation of powers, executive, legislative, and judicial, and state versus federal. It is essentially stating that an administrative agency does not have judicial powers to, de to determine the constitutionality of a statute or, conflict or a conflict with federal law. The main arguments raised by Mr. Brown's request are based on violations of state statutes, 7507 in particular. Article 3, Section 3.5 does not bar investigation nor expressly prevent MSERA from declaring an ordinance illegal or violating a state statute. Also, MSERA is not being asked to refuse to enforce a statute, it is being asked the opposite. It is being asked to enforce 7507 and related statutes in order to provide the public protections afforded by law. From another attorney, this one an elected official here in Marin, there is absolutely no bar to having MSERA pursue an investigation. 
Yeah. Another attorney, and I can do this. I'm going to only do one more. Yeah. I could do this for a long time. About another minute there. Um, yeah. Well, it appears that council's reliance upon Article 3, Section 3.5 is misplaced. The cited language relates to the inability of an administrative agency to invalidate stats, state statutes. I'm not going to read the rest of it in the interest of time. In search of further clarification, I contacted the State Assembly's Committee on Public Employees Retirement and Social Security. Committee staff directed me to Government Code Section 31543, among others. It speaks directly to the powers of a retirement board to investigate. It is number eight in your handout. It says, the board may audit a county or district to determine the correctness of retirement benefits. Section 31543 puts no conditions or limitations on that right. I then asked the committee if there were any circumstances under which a retirement board must investigate. The answer is number nine in your handout. Please read it. I'll wait. The sender of that, of that email was Karen Green, chief consultant to the committee, to the assembly committee. So where does that leave us and where does that leave you? Tens, perhaps hundreds of millions of public dollars are at stake. You are fiduciaries. I sat through one of Ms. Dunning's continuing education talks on fiduciary duty. She did a terrific job. Each of you knows how serious that duty is. This board can easily resolve this issue by hiring outside counsel specializing in California retirement law to provide a second opinion as to whether the board has the legal right to perform an investigation and whether it should. This is a formal request that you do exactly that. Anything less would be willful blindness. If Ms. Dunning's reasoning is legally sound, your position will be strengthened. If not, then you must go where the law and, the, and your duties take you. <laughs> if the Brown Act prevents you from addressing this issue today, and I know that it does. Thanks, David. We're I have one sentence left. Wrap this up. One sentence left. Thank you. I, I ask that you please now instruct your staff to put this matter on the agenda of your next meeting. I welcome your comments. All right, well, this is the time for public comments, so we won't comment, but thank you for your... Oh, you, you actually do, according to the Brown Act, have the right to comment, and you do have the right to direct staff to put this on an agenda. So that's, so that's exactly what I'm asking you to do. I'll remind the board that we discuss things in a meeting that are agendized with, as per Section 7507, plenty of time and to, to um, get them on the agenda, so thank you. It's, um, it's too rare that we get comments from the public, and we really appreciate your interest. I, I appreciate, I'm glad you appreciate my interest, but I want to make sure that everyone in this room understands the Brown Act does not prevent you from discussing this matter as long as you don't make policies, policy decisions, and it specifically, specifically authorizes you to direct staff to put this item on a future agenda. You don't have to, but it, it permits it for sure. Thank you for your comments. Okay, got you. Jeff, do you have something? Only if you have a question about the Brown Act and what the Brown Act requires. No, I, I think we're pretty clear on that. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak today? Mr. Primo, welcome back. Thank you, David. Paul Primo, Mill Valley. And um, based on the discussion you just had, um, we don't understand why you simply can't put this today on your agenda for your next meeting. That's all we ask is you, you decide today put this on the agenda for the meeting you have, I guess, in September. Meeting each month. Yeah. yeah, and if I understand you, you're saying that you would discuss such a thing. Where else? Where Where would you, other than here today, or in a like forum like today, address that issue? As I said, we discuss things that are on the agenda. This isn't on the agenda. It's a time for public comment only. So we're all ears. Well, then can we get it on the agenda? You, you made the request to the chair. The chair sets the agenda. So yeah, the, chair the, the request has been made. Right. And? The request has been made. It's been heard. It hasn't made it to the Well, agenda. what is our process procedure then <coughs> to ensure, or at least to understand, uh, whether you'll put it on your agenda or why you won't put it on your agenda. Let's see. Mr. Chair, yes. the council want to answer yeah. that question here. Do you have a comment on that? 
So first of all, the agenda setting, just what we've always done is the chair has delegated the authority to set the agenda. So if there's a request for agenda items, the chair takes it under consideration and discusses it with the retirement administrator typically and decides whether or not it's something that you want to have on and discuss. That's the process. So there's been a request made for this to be on the agenda and I would expect that the chair would consult with me and perhaps with council and decide whether it's an appropriate item for the for a future meeting. That's the process. And it's you know, just and you and you don't typically make that decision here today at meet this meeting. That's how it's worked. Does the public get any feedback on your decision whether or not to do that? Public doesn't get any feedback on that, but I will <clears throat> I will tell you that I have read very carefully the grand jury findings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, these are considered decisions. They're not, I, I don't have a party line here that I'm trying to close. We're, we're listening. Well, I guess we find that the procedure seems to be a little bit wanting. Well, it's not wanting. It's the same procedure that you've seen through all the years that you've been here. You request for agenda items. The chair takes it under advisement. The chair decides whether or not it's something that they want to agendize for a full discussion on the board. And so we would only know if it's not on the agenda, that, that you've decided not to put it on the agenda. Right. All right. <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, one comment from... There's a standing item on every board agenda that allows the board to discuss items for future meetings. Mm -hmm. And that's there for that reason. The public is not entitled to understand the de deliberate what goes on in the minds of board members, but they are fully able to see what the board discusses uh, at these meetings. Could that be on today's? It is. Agenda? It is on today. It's on today's agenda. <coughs> Every board meeting agenda has an item to discuss future agenda items. So that's the opportunity for board members, other board members, to suggest if they want to see an item on the agenda also. Mm -hmm. And so then the chair, and just like your, the request that was made today, the chair would take that under advisement for the developing the future agenda. So in today's, when that comes up on the agenda today, you might discuss our request. We're not going to no. It's no. The request won't get discussed. There'll be a, there'll be the opportunity for the rest of the board to suggest are there items that they want to see for future agendas. So it's possible that others on the board or the chair, all of any or all of you raise that issue today and sure. that item on today's mm -hmm. agenda. We Thank urge you to do so. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments from the press or from the public? All right. Slip there. Good morning. I'm Jody Morales with CSPP. Um, I do have that section of the Brown Act if you want me to read it, but I assume you all know that, that we could we could request and you could consider putting things on future agendas. Um, I do understand that it might be the wrong time for you to uh, decide to hire outside counsel, but I wonder if Ms. Dunning could provide us with her explanation of uh, Article 3, Section 3.5 that would have prevented the board from the investigation that Mr. Brown asked for. May I make one clarification? Yes. I am not counsel to anyone other than this board and, right. and the retirement system, so I am not advising members of the public on this topic. Right. Well, we just want to know how you came to your conclusion. That's all. Not advising us about anything, just um, how you came to the conclusion that it didn't, it didn't warrant investigation. You know, I think the administrators already covered this, that our internal process of how we come to our decisions is how we come to our decisions. <clears throat> We're a group of nine people. We don't always think the same at all times, but we come to a consensus. You, you, you <coughs> communication that we provided back in September was specific to the questions that were asked at that time. You've been asked before to look at the grand jury report and study that and study whether it was whether it was appropriate. You decided that was not within your purview because your this board's responsibility is to collect the contributions, invest the contributions, and pay the, the benefits. The granting of benefits is provided by the employer sponsor. That's who grants the benefits. So the question of whether they're properly granted is addressed to the employer, which is what the grand jury report did. It said the employers need to look that they properly grant them, and the employers responded to that. So you have not taken it beyond that point. Yes, 
Trustee Bolger. As a lawyer and as a member of the board, I have nothing but the highest respect for Ms. Tunney, and I'd like to make that clear to the public. She is a, a, a top-notch attorney with wonderful skills, and so I think this uh, um, discussion today needs to cease. I didn't mean to discourage her in any way. I'm just asking for clarification so that the public understands how you arrived at it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. Richard Tate, CSPP. <clears throat> Last year, Actually, December 16, Mr. Brown submitted a list of questions to you related to Ms. Dunning's October 5, 2015 letter to him. You took no action and did not answer his questions. His questions are still valid, even more so in light of Article 3, Section 3.5 issue that he raised. So this is a formal request that you provide answers in writing to those questions before your next meeting. Again, uh, will you so provide those answers before your next meeting? Uh, you know, we're listening here. We hear your request. How? As with all requests, you'll take it under advisement and talk to the administrator and decide whether that's something you want to do. You've answered. You felt you, as I said before, about the report. You appreciated it and decided to move on from that. We look forward to your answers before the next meeting. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, thank you. <clears throat>